Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing good. So today again pipeline concept I am going to continue further. So in uh, previous lecture we learned how to create a simple pipeline. Now we will be understanding meaning of each and every component and then we will learn how to put our pipeline code that is Jenkins file into GitHub repositories and how to build our pipelines from uh, using the code which is placed in GitHub. So in the pipeline we have stages. What is stages? This section wraps all the individual stage definitions or directives that define the main body and logic of the pipeline. So in the stages section all the individual stage definitions will be written. And under the stage you will have steps. This section wraps a set of DSL steps within a stage definition. It serves to separate the collection of a step from other items within the stage such as environment definition and others. You will see one more option that is posts. This section wrap around steps and conditions to be done or checked at the end of pipeline run or at the end of a stage. So suppose one stage is completed successfully. You want to send some emails. You can put it in the post section. So once your some stage is done or all the pipeline is completed, you can have a post section which can help you to perform the post actions. So if you see the example now, pipeline, a starting pipeline and then agent, any agent you are using. In the stages, you have a stage and inside the stage, we have steps. Now, if you want to put the post, after one of the stage, you are putting the post and then again next stage and then again we are having the post option. Now, what is directives? So a directive can be thought of as a statement or block of code that does that does any of the following in pipeline. So define values. An example of this is agent directive. So you, you have seen here, right? Agent any. So what is agent directive? An example of this is agent directive, which allows us to specify a node or container to run an entire pipeline or a stage in. If, if we wanted to run our pipeline on a node named worker, we could use agent like worker. So right now we are specifying agent any. Means this is going to run our pipeline on any of the available agents. But if you want to run it explicitly on the particular system or on a particular agent, like one agent we have or one node which name is worker, you can specify the agent name as worker. There is one more thing that configures behavior. So an example of this is trigger directive that let us configure how often Jenkins checks for source updates or triggers our pipeline. If we wanted to re-trigger our pipeline at 7 a.m. every day, we can use the trigger directive. I'll show you the example as well. So, and then there is uh, a stage directive, a stage. So an example of this is a stage directive, which exactly defines what actions to be done. So which is expected to have a step section containing DSL steps to be executed. Now, in the steps, the label step itself is a section title which in a stage of within a stage of the pipeline. However, within the step section, you can have any valid DSL statement such as git, sh means cell, echo commands, etc. You can think of a step here as a corresponding to one of these statements. Now conditionals, you can have conditionals also. Conditionals supply condition or criteria under which an action should occur. These are optional. These are the two cases you may encounter and use. So conditionals are not mandatory. You can have it or you can't have it. So, there is a condition like when. So, strictly speaking, this is a directive. It resides within a stage definition and defines criteria for whether or not a stage should be executed. For example, you want to build, uh, run the build stage when 
your branch is foo. If some other branch is used, you don't want to do it. So it will run only the stage when this particular condition is matching. Now, conditions block is the in the post section that defines the criteria for doing post processing. Even you can have conditions in the post sections. The criteria conditions here refer to the status of bill such as success or failure. So this is all the components which a pipeline can have. So the components which is kept with the dotted, those are not mandatory, which are not dotted, like with the permanent blocks, those are the mandatory sections. So pipeline keyword is mandatory. Then you have agent, which is mandatory. Environment, tools, options, triggers, parameters, libraries. These are not mandatory. Stages are mandatory. Inside the stages, a stage is mandatory. And then again, there you can have agent, environment, tools. That's not mandatory. Steps are mandatory. Post section is not mandatory. More stages, like you want to have multiple stages. That's not mandatory. And then post is also not mandatory. So now, what is the pipeline? The first keyword you always see, that is the pipeline. So the pipeline block is required in a Jenkins declarative pipeline. So the declarative pipeline will start with keyword pipeline and a scripted pipeline will start with keyword node. So the pipeline block is required in a Jenkins declarative pipeline. It is the outermost section and signals that this is a pipeline project. The syntax is simply pipeline and then starting curly braces and closing curly braces with the rest of the code within the closure. So pipeline, all your pipeline code and then you are closing the braces. Now, isn't any, as I told, this syntax tells Jenkins that a pipeline or a stage can run on any agent that is defined without regard to what level it has. Agent none, when used at the top level, this indicates that we are not specifying any agent globally for the pipeline. The implication is that agent will be specified if needed for individual stages. So you can you can define the agent only for the stages as well. If you define agent with label, this indicates that pipeline or a stage can run on any agent that has the particular label associated to it. You have a section called environment. So Jenkins environment variable is a global variable exposed through the env variable and used anywhere in the Jenkins file. So you can define your environment variable and you can use that variable throughout your Jenkins pipeline. Any value stored in environment variable gets stored as a string type. Environment variables can be set either at the pipeline top level, at a specific stage level or inside the script block. So how to define environment keyword, curly braces start, curly braces close, and inside that, like I am defining time zone, is turn. Time zone DS, time zone daylight savings. So this is one environment variable which we are defining. One more section you can have that's alternative, not mandatory tools. So Jenkins users are familiar with using global tool configurations. So in the global tools, you can define multiple tools like Gradle, Maven, or and and many other tools are available. So if you want to use tools inside your pipeline, you have to use tools your tool details and then closing the curly braces. You have options sections. What option section does? Like in the free style we have seen, using the options you want to discard some build or do the log rotations or you want to skip the checkout options. These all things you can define like options keyword and then the actual options. We have the trigger sections like you want to build your job or trigger your job on event of some other job. Example, this directive allow you to specify what kind of trigger should initiate build in your pipeline. Note that this does not apply to multi-branch pipeline or GitHub organizations or Bitbucket project job that are marked by Jenkins files and triggered otherwise, such as a webhook that notifies Jenkins when a change is made. There are four different source code management neutral trigger currently available, cron, Pol SCM, Upstream and GitHub push. So how crone is used? The crone syntax used in Jenkins is a specification of when and how often do something based on five fields separated by a space. Each of fields represent a different unit of time. So you have section, first section is minute, 
hour, day of day month, month, and then day of week. So minute is 0 to 59 minutes, hour is 0 to 23 hours, day of month is 1 to 33, month is 1 to 12, and day of week is 0 to 7. And 0 and 7 both represent Sunday. So example, in the pipeline you can put like this, triggers, and then crown, 10. So in the crown you have 5 star by default, means every minute. Now you are putting 10 star, star, star 4 times, means start the pipeline execution at 10 minutes past the hour. Suppose you want to run it every 10 minutes, then you will put a star upon 10 and then 4 star. So this will run it every minutes. You want to run it 8 a.m. Monday through Friday, then cron 0, 8 and then 1 to 5, that is day of the week. So it will run Monday to Friday. So then you have one section called parameters. In the free style, we have seen how to create a parameterized job. But suppose in the pipeline also, you want to have the parameters. How to use that? I will show you an example. So the parameter directive provide a list of parameters that a user should provide when triggering the pipeline. The values for these user-defined parameters are made available to pipeline steps via parameter object. See the parameters declarative pipelines for each specific uses. I will show you in the next slide. Each parameter has a name, value, depending on parameter type. This information is exported as environment variable when the build starts, allowing subsequent part of the build configuration to assess those values. For example, this can be performed by using parameter name or syntax or percentage parameter name on Windows. So, you can have a string parameter. Like uh, how example parameters, curly braces start a string, name of your parameter, then default value and description if you want to put text parameter, similar way boolean parameter, choice parameter and password parameter. So these parameters we have seen in free style. In the pipeline you can use the keyword parameters and then start curly braces and curly braces and in between you can put the parameter name, its default values or descriptions. So, an example here I am showing is pipeline is entering and there are four parameters, five parameters, a string parameters, so a string name, default value, description, text parameter, boolean parameter, choice parameter and password. And how to call it? In the step sections, we are using the echo keyword and here with the dollar. So, dollar and your params keyword dot your parameter name. Then next, again dollar, parameters keyword and then dot parameter name. So, this way you can call your parameters. So, now let us see how we can create a Jenkins file, how we can place it in GitHub and how to use those pipelines. Now, let us create a pipeline and this pipeline name we can put pipe Jenkins git. So, we are putting it in the git. So, maybe that's why I have put the name like that. Now, okay. And le meanwhile, let us log into our GitHub. So, so now uh, once uh, our GitHub is logged in, we can have. So, in the GitHub right now, here if you see in the DevOps tech stack, there is a repository named DevOps tech stack. And here I am creating a file called Jenkins file. So, name is Jenkins, J-E-N-K-I-N-S, Jenkins file. And here the same pipeline which we have executed in the previous lecture. So, pipeline keyword then agent, then stages and inside the stage we have a stage 1, this build stage, test stage and deploy stage. And now we are creating the pipeline here and we will be using. So, you can put here second option called pipeline script from source code management. And then here you can select git and your repository details. So, let us go here and use our repository. So, we can, we can go here and we can copy the path of our git repo. So, this is path of our git repo. Let us go here and just paste the github path. And then credential like what the username and password you are using to log into your github. So, here I have saved my credentials yes124 and the password. How you can do that? You can click on the add button, click on the Jenkins option. Here you can give your github username 
GitHub username and then you can put your GitHub password and then you can add it. So now what I can do, I have already existing user and password. So I'm using user existing user and password and then go down. What is the script path? So my Jenkins file name is Jenkins file only, but J is a smaller in the beginning. So just put a small J here and now save it. So now my Jenkins job is saved. Let us see now run the job and let us see how it is pulling the code from GitHub. So click on build now. So as you can see here, the pipeline is running. Let us see. So now you can see four stages, declarative, checkout, source code management, then build, test and deploy. Now go to the console log. So here you see what it has run. Selected, uh, cloning our repositories. And after that, it started executing hello build stage, then hello test, hello deploy, and then finally success. So this way you can create your Jenkins pipeline, keep it in GitHub or any other repositories. You can specify the repository details and you can use it. In coming lectures, we'll be doing more real-time examples related to the pipelines. Thank you so much, guys, for giving your valuable time.